Today's video is a presentation of my entire typography curriculum. I do lettering at every grade level from kindergarten through fifth grade, but only because fifth grade is as high as I teach. These lessons can be adapted for middle school and high school. Is typography the right word for this? I don't know. I realize typography generally refers to the actual mechanical printing process, but because I'm doing so many different kinds of lettering, uh, I just use typography as my umbrella term for any projects that I'm doing that involve lettering, writing, uh, any sort of text. Why am I teaching this? It's not in my curriculum specifically, but relating arts to uh, the world at large certainly is. I teach it because I love lettering, I love writing, and I love incorporating letters into my art, and so have a lot of other artists throughout history. Also, just to support ELA in the curriculum, I want students to love the act of making letters, uh, realizing that writing and text making is an art form, and I want to get them over that hump of thinking uh, that writing and art and math are somehow separate things that you're good at one and not the others. I really want to integrate these things and encourage everyone else to integrate them as well. The act of writing is an artistic expression. You know, we write in different styles for different reasons. We're jotting a note or we're addressing a wedding invitation or we're uh, making something commemorative. We use different styles of expression, both in speaking and writing, for different occasions. We write to convey information or to express emotion. And knowing how to do this visually as well as orally is a great skill to have. Now let's put some ELA into your A-R-T. As with most of my full curriculum videos, I'm starting with the youngest, going to the oldest. In pre-K and kindergarten, you can do whatever you want with the outline of a letter. Specifically, the letter that you are teaching that week, if you are a classroom teacher, or the first letter of their name. Everybody likes to make art with their name in it. And whatever skill you are teaching, coloring, cutting, gluing, whatever you're teaching, you can do that with a letter form. The same goes for process art. Now, these aren't mine. This is all stuff that I got off of various websites. But again, in the elementary art classroom, whatever sort of process you're teaching at that really a uh, low level pre-K kindergarten first grade level whether it's you know rubbing or gluing or cutting um, basic painting doing uh, mosaic you can do this with a letter form and if it's the letter of their name they're going to be very engaged this is my kindergarten project I make squares, I guess they're about two by three rectangles. They have to be the same size top to bottom, but not necessarily the same width. And these are all my examples, but I give them an array of materials, including uh, crayons, markers, stickers, and I just let them have at it. In order to get the next letter, they need to tell me what the next letter in their name is, which of course we all know is can be a challenge for this grade, but all the kids absolutely love it. They love putting their hands on all these different materials, and of course, they love their names. Here are some examples. This project actually took me two classes, taped them all together on the back, so everybody has their own sign. Another way I use letters with the younger grades is stamping. A stamping is the first step in my printing curriculum. We start with stamping at the younger grades, and I have a lot of different stamps, but I also include the, the letter stamps. If they don't yet know how to make words, they just like the stamping, and if they do, then I can challenge them to spell their name or spell their favorite words. 
This is another example of just including letter forms into a project or a subject you would be teaching anyway. It's very easy to make your own letter stamps. You just get any foam letters and glue them onto a piece of cardboard or foam board or wood, any sort of backing to make it a little bit easier to hold. Moving up to first grade, we make an alphabet book. And the way I introduce this is I ask if everybody knows the alphabet, and of course they do, and I say, do you remember when you were learning the alphabet? Did any of you read any of those alphabet books that say like A is for apple and B is for, and then if they'll start, you know, a ball or book, yeah, exactly. So these are really helpful to help people learn the letters. So we're gonna make one, and maybe yours will help somebody else learn to read. I show a few read aloud videos of ABC books, mostly to illustrate that they don't all have to be the same. Uh, a doesn't always have to be for Apple. You can make A for whatever you want. When we start, I give them half sheets of printer paper that I have already printed outlines A is for. And you can see that I also provide them with samples. And my book here is just a piece of construction paper folded in half. This is gonna fit your letters very easily. I love when I go over, you know, the, the setting this up. A is for apple, B is for balloon. When I show them U is for underwear, I always get a big laugh. This is some of my student work. The next week, you can see uh, for the example here that the Q is for queen, I had already drawn, but on the second week, because they already know what they're doing, I have them draw their own letter. Another important step is I don't have them go in order because no, very rarely are they going to get all 26 letters in two weeks and i also like to use the ideas they have but also if everybody starts with the same letter then i have to have 25 a's basically i just randomly pass out the letters and get them over the idea that they have to go in order this is absolutely one of my favorite projects it really reflects the sort of artwork that i do and how i integrate lettering into my work and these are our names inspired by paul clay I show this as an example, but I also show some other artwork by other artists, and I really like to show this one by Miro because some of the letters they can pick out as parts of the alphabet and some look really weird. And this is where I make the point, when you are in your homeroom class, it's very important that you make your letters exactly correctly. When you are writing for someone to be reading, you should make your letters exactly the way the teacher has told you. But in art class, you can make your letters any way you want. You could make your letters into a secret code. You could hide your words in the artwork so no one even knows what you're writing. And this is where I'm introducing the idea of writing as being power. So we go over this outfit and some of the letters they can point out, they can pick out, and some of them are like, wow, look at that Z, that's crazy. Now, how are you gonna make your letters? I use quick sticks for this because they're so fun. And the construction of this is pretty much exactly like the one that I showed you for the kindergarten in that uh, we have individual cards. And for this, I usually make them four by six. I uh, usually use cardstock so that they've got something heavyweight. And the first thing they're going to do is they're going to make their letters really big all the way to the edge. And then they can fill in each section with a different color. And you're kind of even like hiding the letters. And you can add stripes or flowers or dots or you could draw pictures. You could do anything you want on your letter. And then at the end, they're going to line them up for me. I'm gonna flip them all over and tape them on the back. And that's my name. And it's very easy for you to fold up no matter how big it is. And here are some of my students at work. This usually takes two weeks. 
And for the, you know, the really short names like Mia, you know, are going to finish right away. I have them do the last name or the, you know, someone in their family. And then someone whose name is Guinevere is usually going to take the whole two weeks. And then this is Noah Lightfoot, you can see. And Hunter and Audrey, Alexander. And then, oh, everybody loves taking this picture when everybody hands it, holds it up. So the second graders absolutely love this project, and I love it as well. It's got some art history. It's got some lettering. It's got a new material that they haven't used before, the color sticks. But really, you could use this uh, in any size, and you can use it with any sort of material. Symmetry names, I'm not going to go too in-depth on this one. I do this one with the third grade, and there are lots of examples of teaching this project online. So I'm not going to belabor this one. However, I will point out that this is one that can be expanded up into high school very easily. The basics is that you're going to take a piece of paper. I use legal size copy paper copy paper specifically because you can see through it very easily to trace and you need a big black marker you're going to have the students write their name as you fold the paper and write their name on the fold and then trace it through the other side now the way i like to introduce this is i show this is a student example but i show an example of my name up like this and i say can anyone read this and of course most people can't and then I turn it sideways. Oh, yes, yes. And so I do that with three or four examples of mine. Again, we're emphasizing that you can hide the writing. You can use it as a code or a secret. You can put messages into your art that are not necessarily obvious to everyone else. Again, when you are in your English class, you need to make your letters exactly the way the teacher is showing you. But when you're an artist, you can make those letters any way you want. This is especially good if they're learning to write in cursive. Uh, that makes a really uh, pretty art work of art if it's in cursive. Here's my friend Jose and Noah and Carmelo. You can see uh, people are doing it in very different ways. No right way or wrong way. It's your name. You make it any way you want. This comics assignment I do with third, fourth, and fifth grade, but this is an example of one that can be done all the way up through high school. What I'm emphasizing here is that when we tell stories with comics, we are using three elements, drawing, writing, and symbols. So I'm not going to go in this in too much depth because I'm going to make a separate video just for this but this is an example of a comic that I made and we read through it frame by frame and you can see that in each frame I am introducing a different symbol and we talk about what it means and how they can understand it even though I have not written out the dinosaur is scary everybody can tell from the picture you know, the, the dinosaur is scary. So we talk about how we can get that meaning of partly by the drawing, partly by the writing, and partly from the symbols. Then, you know, we have a review of that idea. We talk about different things we can put in. We talk about the difference between a smooth bubble for talking and a fluffy bubble for thinking, explanation, maybe how to draw loud noises. And I prepare for them different pre-printed comic frames. This one has six. I have others that have four. I have some that have lines underneath for writing. And I also give them some blanks if they want to make their own. And my only requirement is that it, it can't just be a simple cartoon, even if you're using only one panel, it has to tell some sort of story. It has to have some symbols or some writing or uh, convey a meaning uh, beyond just the simple sketch. And they, I'm actually teaching in the beginning of the year with third, fourth, and fifth uh, this year. So I don't have any student examples to show uh, this year, but they're doing a terrific job and they really love it. I give them visual onomatopoeia in 
fourth grade. Some students have already had this in English class uh, where, you know, onomatopoeia is words that sound like what they mean, but we're talking about doing it visually and so they look like what they mean. I introduce the concept and show them lots of examples and then they do their own. Now a lot of times they will copy just what I have done, which is fine, but in both of these examples, these are, are, are not my examples. So the, the student came up with the B by themselves and I had shown the word broken with the broken line but the student came up with the bones and I thought that was brilliant. Here are some other student examples. For this, I give them a variety of papers and I let them use markers, crayons, colored pencils. I gave them, give them a wide range of materials because this is a good opportunity not only to work on the project of the onomatopoeia, but also to get a feel for different materials and papers, how things work well together. So here's a word about needlework. I teach needlework at every grade level, so I have a separate video just on my needlework curriculum. But I do want to mention that just like any type of process art, using letter forms when you're teaching needlework is a really great to engage students because they're small, easy to do, and of course, engages everyone. In this case, the applique is some third grade work and the cruel on burlap that is fourth grade. Illuminated letters I do with fourth grade. It's another example of a lesson that can be done all the way up to high school and past. This involves both your literacy ELA content and also some history. The first thing we talk about is that in the days before the printing press, books had to be copied out by hand, letter by letter, and they didn't have artificial light and they didn't have erasers. So they had to do this all day long. They couldn't you know, work when it was dark. And if they made a mistake, they had to start all over again. And how would you like it if that was your job to copy out a book letter by letter by letter. Would you get bored? Would you maybe start doodling in the margins? And so we talk about how these letters, I again, I'm doing a short version here uh, for this whole curriculum, but when I do it uh, just on this lesson, I've got a number of slides that show ancient doodles, uh, the marginalia, and we talk about how this developed into these really fancy initial letters, which then really took off. And so I show a variety of examples of really beautiful letters in medieval work. And we look closely, we find a lot of dragons or animals or fish. Sometimes the inside of the letter uh, is used as a picture. We've got a lot of gold. This is a great time to introduce Sharpie markers or metallic markers. For my students, I give them a variety of surfaces to work on, including a poster board is good, and I also give them a variety of higher quality writing materials, the, the good permanent markers, the really fine markers, and I encourage them to do all different styles. These are examples of some of their work. And in this lesson, we're just working on single letters. Meanwhile, the next year in fifth grade, I take that concept even farther and we are dealing with a lettering. We're going to be doing whole words, phrases, sentences. We're developing an awareness of gr modern graphic art and how different typefaces are used for different uh, purposes. I have them read this out loud. One thing I talk about during this frame is how easy this is for them in the fifth grade, but how kindergartners really struggle. And sometimes with kindergarten, if I don't write their names with a very simple letter form, you know, for instance, the A that is just a, a circle and a stick, if I do one of these 
uh, different types of A's, they'll tell me I'm spelling their name wrong because they don't recognize these other letter forms as A's. But by the fifth grade, you can recognize these letter forms uh, in all different fonts and shapes and you can read upside down and that this is an amazing skill. I give them four weeks. I really encourage them to use different types of paper, different kinds of pens, and that they're going to mess it up, that this is definitely something that you have to practice and take a long time to really develop your style and your skill, and that this is a skill that really can take them farther into life and something that they will use on and on. While they are working, I have playing uh, on silent a whole playlist of lettering videos so that they can see the actual drawing in action and also this exposes them to things even that are above uh, their skill level in drawing say 3D letters, in advanced calligraphy. I have a whole stack of lettering guides and fonts to copy but they get even more inspiration in watching someone write the bubble letters or the three-dimensional or character letters. Here you can see my sample board, which has uh, different ways that I have written my name and a few samples of fifth grade work. You could definitely take this beyond what I am teaching uh, into middle school and high school uh, teaching the perspective that the three-dimensional really interests them and this trick of making it look like it's coming right off the page. This is a great way to teach uh, drawing skills, shading, value, optical illusions, lettering, letter forms used as a subject matter in teaching any number of different concepts. I don't teach calligraphy in elementary school, but of course, how many of us learned calligraphy with the time old classic, uh, the speedball a calligraphy lettering book and the traditional dip pens and black ink. I don't often teach artists specifically, but this is one that I do. This is a contemporary artist named Panhandle Slim. His actual name is Scott Stanton, and he is a fantastic contemporary artist he does a lot of social justice work. Something will be in the news today and he will have a painting of it tomorrow. You often see his work at uh, protest movements. And what he does is he combines either very abstract or very just solid colorful backgrounds, very simple cartoon-like portraits of famous people and then quotes of what these people have said. You can do this project having them do people that they admire with their quotes, or you can have them do self-portraits. And I like this for so many different reasons. One, I use this to teach them acrylic painting because it's so flat and simple. Background first, then we do a simple line cartoon of the face and we're painting that in in very flat solid colors uh, without shading or a lot of details and it's just a great way to learn the basics of mixing paint and using the brush and taking care of the brushes the stylized format really works well for beginning painters if I can get my hands on enough, if I can get my hands on enough canvases, we use that. After that, we will use foam core. When we run out of foam core, we will use big pieces of cardboard. A Panhandle Slim himself it's on wood panels or masonite or any old scraps and trash that people bring him. He, he actually works out of a carport in his hometown of uh, Savannah, Georgia and people will bring him things to paint on. He also has a wonderful aesthetic that he sells his paintings in uh, parking lots or uh, outside of uh, commercial buildings 
and they don't have prices on them. You just pay what you are what you are willing to pay. So here he is, and this is the one time that he had a museum show and some more of his work. He actually started his career as a pro skateboarder. So this is a great artist to introduce to um, fifth grade is really the top level of elementary school, but he is perfect for middle school and high school. Now this is my sample. And I also have in my room another painting self-portrait that I made that is much more realistic looking. And I like the fact that I have both of them in my room so they can see that one artist can paint the same subject in very different styles. But for this, I've specifically made it a very flat, cartoony self-portrait with a statement that I am making. Here is some of my fifth grade student work. You can see that one's on cardboard. I think that's Post Malone. You can see this was a few years back since uh, Visco Girl. I already have another video on my collaborative bulletin boards, but I thought I would just insert it here. That's our school motto. This is a collage done with torn paper. And on the right, this is the project that I showed you before with the Paul Clay letters where everyone made their name. This spells out Willow Oak School. And this is a great example of how you can use letters to hide the message. So you have to really look closely to see if you can read Willow Oak School in there. And that was, both of these are end of the year collaborative projects that I can just have people sort of work on in extra time. And I put those up as bulletin boards at the end of the year that last all the way to the beginning of the next year so that I have something on the boards before everybody has made some art. So I hope that this was helpful and inspirational to you. I'm gonna be putting my whole curriculum online, but of course I'm teaching full time. So it's slow going. Like and subscribe if you wanna see more.